Hey, what's up, YouTubers? My name is Pastor Adam. <laughs> this is my wife. Oh, no. I'm just kidding. I'm yeah, kidding. Yeah. It's not you. Even we are on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're on YouTube. <laughs> good but this morning. is not. This is not that. So, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us, United at Home. My name is Adam Martino. This is my beautiful wife, Leslie. Hi. And we're so thankful that you're joining us this morning, United X Home, United at Home. Come oh. on, somebody. We're so excited to be together. God's got a good word. Yep. God is going to meet you wherever you are today, whether you're at home, on the couch, taking a bubble bath, looking, driving down the road, or looking at your phone when you should be paying attention to the road. No matter where you are, God wants to meet you, and He wants to do something in your life. He's going to meet you at your level of expectancy. So whatever you're expecting to get out of this morning, That's right. you're going to get it. Come on, somebody, in the name of Jesus, you're going to get it. Anyway, we're super excited to be together. We're meeting in person 10 a.m. Yes, we are 10 a.m. We're meeting in person. Of course, you're watching us online. But hey, if you're starting to feel comfortable going out to different places, we're still safe too. Yeah, so I, I believe like us. I believe like 85% of our church is fully vaccinated. Yeah. You know, the, the way uh, our city is moving at the pace of vaccination and everything that's going on, masks are coming off, CDC is lifting regulations. It, it's time. Yes. It's time to get back to church. Come on, Come on somebody. It's time to get back. If you're hanging out in Target, if you're going to the movie theaters, if you're at Uptown Alley every Friday night from 7 to 9 p.m., you should be in church every Sunday morning at, at 10 a.m. to 11. Come on, somebody. <laughs> yeah, at 10 a.m. to 11. <laughs> We'd love to connect with you. We'd love to encourage you. But anyway, we're so thankful that yeah. you're tuning in online, whether you're watching from our website, unitedchurchrva.com, you're watching on Facebook, you're watching on unitedchurch.online platform, mm -hmm. however you're watching, we're so thankful. And we want to give you a couple of ideas how you could get the most out of this online experience. Yeah. So the first thing that you could do is remove all distractions. Like yeah. for the next 45 minutes, just clear everything, clear your mind, clear up the mechanism. <laughs> And say, God, I'm ready for you to speak to me. I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to hear your word. We've been in the series, The Holy Spirit. Oh, so and let good. me tell you guys something. I, I, I know you weren't physically there with us last week. We had an awesome online experience where we showed some footage of us preaching in Malindi, Kenya. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit really, really met us at, at, at in-person church. Amen. The Holy Amen. Spirit really, really met us. We didn't have a, a, a large crowd by any means. But we just went all in. People were emotional. The Holy Spirit was moving, touching hearts, touching minds. I really believe that in this next season, God wants to do something so significant in your heart, in your life, through the power of his Holy Spirit. And the best thing that you could do right now is just for the next 40 minutes, remove distractions. You could also take notes. Take notes. It's so much easier to remember and go back to like what Pastor Adam or whoever speaking says and what the word has been spoken. And, um, and the next thing we want to do is engage. We want to know that you guys are here. Yeah, let us watching. know where you're watching from. Let us know who you're watching with. You know, if you have a close group of friends that you've been meeting with, invite them to your house and host a watch party. Yeah. Like, you don't even have to wait for it on Facebook. It's up Sunday mornings on our website. You could go directly to our website and pull the footage off there. Watch yeah. it with your friends. You could pastor them. You could unpack the moments with them. Talk through some of the points. Talk through, through some of the scriptures. And then you could have some coffee and bagels. That's Come on, right. somebody. You could have some brunch. <laughs> with your friends and still pray through and talk through the message. Yeah. We really, here's the point, we want you to get the most out of this Christian life. Yeah. God has intended for you to do life with other people. Yeah. Life is best in the context of relationship. You right. grow, you learn, you, you, you discipline yourself, you, you learn from mistakes, right? You learn from moments. Life is all about moments and moments happen in the context of relationships. So, so drop, drop some hearts, drop some emojis. Yeah. If you're on Facebook, like share this with everybody on your contact list, just share it and say, this is what I normally do. I just share it and say, yeah. it's time for a church. Join me for church. Hey, welcome to United Church. And I just drop it out there for the world to see. We're yeah. super excited about connecting. Yeah, and let's get ready for church. So I'd love to pray us and get us ready for the word this morning. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time, and we give it right back to you. We want to honor you and glorify you through the word and the worship today. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' amen. name, amen. Come on, y'all. Let's get ready to worship. Good morning, United Church. 
Church or non-United Church, we are so glad, whoever you are, that you're here with us. We feel so grateful to be able to come together, whether it's virtually or in person, just to worship God. When two or more are together, God's with us, and we're going to praise Him and thank Him for all that He is and all that He does.
could ever come close. We ain't need to see God. Do you know this verse? Don't tap with us. Божий бит нам, на целожну любовь. Он дежу ливре сой, и вергуенца ноа. Он ту пресенция, Диос. Hey, good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining us United at Home. We're in week three of the Holy Spirit, and I hope that it's been blessing your heart. As a matter of fact, we did something a little bit different last week. We had the chance to preach uh, a year ago or so, two years ago, in Malindi, Kenya, and we aired that footage. And we aired it for a very specific reason. We're going to be re-rolling our missions, and one of the missions that we're looking to partner with is One Child, an organization called One Child. And it's actually the organization that we went to Kenya with. And uh, there's going to be more details to come, but I just wanted to start to make our church family a little bit more familiar with our heartbeat, with like partnerships and people that we want to partnership and lean into. So there'll be more information to come alongside that. I hope you were blessed by it. I was blessed by it. It was super, super nostalgic for me. I was crying like a baby. But anyway, I want to jump right into week three of the Holy Spirit. Week three of the Holy Spirit, and I want to ask you a very specific question as we get started. A very, very specific question as we get started, and here it is. I want you to write this down. Come on, write it down with me. What if you let yourself be led by the Holy Spirit? Come on, somebody. What if you let yourself be led by the Holy Spirit? Of all the voices that you could hear, the Holy Spirit's voices without a shadow of a doubt the sweetest and strongest, the most heavenly and the most profound voice that we'll ever hear, that we'll ever, we'll ever come into contact with. As a matter of fact, when the Spirit of God speaks to you, it transcends everything that you are. I'm going to say that again because it's really, really important that you write it down, that you catch on to this. When the Spirit of God speaks to you, it transcends everything that you are all that you have known, it transcends everything that you are. It, it's like this, 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 this opening of a veil where we can see into spiritual things. And, and you might be saying, well, you're saying speak, and now you're saying speak. See, when the voice of the Lord comes on you, when you hear the voice of the Lord, he allows you to see into another realm. It's almost like getting a glimpse into who he is, into how the person of the Holy Spirit acts the emotional state, the emotional process of the person of the Holy Spirit, how much he loves you. Come on, somebody. How much he wants to do for you, how much he wants to do in and through you. The voice of the Lord is the most loving of voices, and his ways are the wisest. Come on, somebody. Write that down with me. The voice of the Lord is the most loving of voices, and his ways are the wisest. Listening to learn to Jesus is the best path and decision. Listening, li learning to listen to Jesus is the best path and the best decision. Now you're saying, you, you're hitting me with a lot of things, PA. We're talking about God. We're talking about Jesus. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. It's the process in which G God created everything. It's the process in which God intended our relationship with him to go. God is the Father. Jesus is the Son. The Holy Spirit is 
is three in one. The Holy Spirit is our comforter and our helper as we're here on earth. As a matter of fact, and we've said this a couple of times over the last couple of weeks, Jesus told his disciples, guys, it's for your advantage that the person of the Holy Spirit comes. It's for your advantage because now it's not just me walking alongside of you. It's me walking with you by being in you. Come on, somebody. It's me walking with you by being in you. When the Spirit of God speaks to you, I'm going to say this again, it transcends everything that you are. When the Spirit of God speaks to you, it transcends everything that you are. You want to know real peace? Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You want to understand true confidence? Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. He's going to lead you. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that He'll direct your steps. Come on, somebody. Isn't that good news? The Bible actually says that He'll direct your steps. That's like putting some kind of gear on your legs and your hips, that when you're starting to make a wrong turn, if you're allowing the person of the Holy Spirit to lead you, he'll direct your steps. He'll get you correctly moving in the direction that he's desiring for your life. That's why it's so important for us as believers to understand what his voice sounds like. It's so important for us as believers to understand what his voice sounds like. I don't know if, if you have children, I, I have three kids and, you know, we live in a multi-story house and sometimes you're down doing the laundry and you need one of the kids, thank God for slaves, right? God created slaves and children. No, I'm just playing. I'm just, I'm kidding. I joke. I kid. Don't, don't. Uh, delete it. Delete the film. No, I'm just playing. God blessed us with slaves and children. So like when you're down and you're in the laundry room and you need an extra set of hands, what do you do, right? You call out for the kids. You call out, hey, kids, and or you call them specifically by name. And I've learned that my children will hear my voice and respond to my voice because they know my voice. If it was some stranger in the house, my kids would run and lock themselves in the closet, dive under the bed, get into the dresser drawer, and have one of their siblings close it on them so they couldn't be found. But they know their dad's voice, and they respond accordingly. It's so important for us to understand the person of the Holy Spirit, how he speaks, how he leads, how he guides, and what he does in the process. Now, what do you mean, PA? What do you mean what he does in the process? How he speaks, how he guides, how he provides. He, he, he does all these things for a particular set of reasons, for a particular understanding. The Holy Spirit will speak to you every day if you let him. How, 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 I, I, it sounds great, PA. All that stuff sounds great, but can you, can you contextualize a little bit? Can you make this easier to understand? I could. The Holy Spirit speaks to you. He speaks to me every day, maybe, maybe not in a physical sense, but maybe through dreams. Maybe the Holy Spirit will speak to you through dreams if you just meditate on him, if you fill yourself with his word. The Bible says that we, we, we're, su we're supposed to hide the word of the Lord in our hearts. So that when we're searching, when we're in processes of searching or developing, we can find the things that are hidden, right? It's like, it's like going to do the laundry and sticking your hand into the pockets because you're fixing the jeans and all of a sudden you reach in there and you come back out with the 20 spot. Come on, somebody. How many people love finding the 20 spot in the, in the laundry? It's, it's the same thing. The, the word of the Lord gets hidden deep down inside of us. It's there. It's resting in us because... We're cognizant and, 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 and we're actively pursuing a relationship with the voice of the Lord and we're reading the word and we're examining our hearts and we're leaning into all that God wants for us. So when he speaks, we, he, we know how to respond. He speaks to us through the daily reading of his word. Come on, somebody. He speaks to us. The Holy Spirit speaks to us through the daily reading of his word. I make it a practice every day. Whether it's five minutes, 15 minutes, or 50 minutes, I open my Bible. Come on, somebody. I open the book, and I see what God has to say to me for today. Maybe I don't read as much as I want to. Maybe I don't read as much as I should, but I make an effort to get into God's Word at least once a day. And He'll speak to you through the reading of His Word. He'll speak to you through sermons and teachings. Come on, somebody. He'll speak to your heart, the Holy Spirit, 
through sermons and teaching. That's why we say note takers are history makers because you're retaining the word of God. How can you ever go wrong if you're retaining the word of God? You know, it's not just United Church. There's so many amazing churches in our city, or in our world, around the globe that you can tune into. Thank you, God, for technology and the ability to, to go out and listen to Pastor Stephen Furtick and listen to Craig Groeschel and listen to T.D. Jakes and all these other amazing men and women of God that are so profound in the gospel. But those deep revelations, those deep understandings of the gospel that they preach from only comes through a revelation by the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. The revelation of the Holy Spirit will show you those deep, deep things through Scripture. I don't know about you, but I've heard the Holy Spirit speak to me through godly friends. Notice I didn't just say friends. What about your friends? Godly friends, somebody. Godly friends. Somebody drop that in the comments below. Godly friends, are you participating? Are you doing life? Are you walking with godly friends in your life? It's so, so important. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. So, so should the countenance of each man. So meaning that we're responsible for encouraging each other. We're responsible for, 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 for getting on each other and saying, man, you need to get into your word. Man, you need to get into prayer. We're responsible for praying with our friends. Come on, somebody. Praying with our friends, not, not just going and, and grabbing a beer, not just going and grabbing a coffee, but sitting down and praying with godly friends that encourage each other. It's so, so important. I just really want you to get a good understanding a good revelation of who the person of the Holy Spirit is and what he wants to do in your life. Listen to this passage of scripture in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 17 to 20. Understand what the, Lord, the will of the Lord is. Understand what the will of the Lord is. Be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things. That sounds kind of kind of kind of counterintuitive to what culture says, right? It says kind of it sounds kind of opposite to what our culture does. It says giving thanks to God in every situation of your life, thanking God for every moment of your life understanding that the Holy Spirit is walking with you. And because the Holy Spirit is here, I'm going to be grateful for my season and my portion. Somebody drop that in the comments below. I'm going to be grateful for my season and my portion and all that the Holy Spirit is trying to do. And that's why he's saying it's so important that, that you have to understand the will of the Lord. And the will of the Lord that he wants you to understand is this. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit because if you're filled with the Spirit, joy will be yours. If you're filled with the Spirit, peace will be yours. If you're filled with the Spirit, confidence will be yours. I don't know about you. Are you easily aggravated? Do you hang on to grudges? Are you a grudgeinator? Come on, somebody. Will you walk around with a grudge in your pocket for about nine and a half hours? You need more of the Holy Spirit in your life. The Holy Spirit can help you overcome offense. The Holy Spirit can help you build a ladder to get up and climb over that offense. Come on, somebody. The Holy Spirit will build a bridge between your existing reality and your destiny. Come on, somebody. The Holy Spirit will help you build a bridge between your existing reality and your destiny. He will lead you to the place that God has for you. My prayer and invitation for everybody listening this morning is to obey the sweet voice of the one who loves you, of the one who witnessed your birth and desires for you to be happy and thrive more than anything. It's the Holy Spirit's desire for you to be happy and thrive more than anything. The Holy Spirit is a gift from God. Come on, somebody. And if, if, if I don't know about you, but I, are you a person that just doesn't like gifts? I've never heard of anything like that in all my life. I love gifts. I, I, I don't like surprise parties. I do. I, I will be honest with you there, but I love gifts. I love getting gifts. I love getting stuff from people. G gifts the most time are not bad, right? 
I, I, I've never received a bad gift or a gift with bad intentions. Maybe you have, and if you have, I'm really sorry about that. That stinks. But I've never received it. Any gift that I've ever received has been because somebody cares about me. Why would God offer you a gift that's not full of love, that's not full of reason, that's not full of compassion. Every gift from God is good. Somebody drop that in the comments below. Every gift from God is good. What are some of God's gifts? This morning, just real quick, I want to breeze through some of God's gifts so you could see, so you could really get an understanding of who the person of the Holy Spirit is and what he wants to do. Here's the first thing that I wrote down, God, some of God's gifts. One of God's gifts is eternal life. Eternal life is a gift from God. Listen to Romans 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Come on, somebody. It's a gift from God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Listen to this in Ephesians 2, verse 8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. God one of God's gifts are, is eternal life. Come on. We, we're thrilled to think about eternal life, right? We get hyped to think about eternal life, not on this side of eternity, on the other side of eternity, a, a renewed earth, a new heaven that, that there's, no, there's no pain, there's no shame, there's no sickness, there's no disease, there's no poverty, there's just thriving and worshiping the Lord and spending the rest of eternity in worship to our Lord. That's the gift of eternal life. Here's the second thing that I want you to write down and I want you to understand the second gift from God is the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. The second gift from God is the Holy Spirit. Listen to this verse in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father promised, which you have heard me speak of. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. He's saying it goes beyond a physical, religion, religious kind of constitution where you walk around and home and you're doing all these kind of things that you think will qualify you for eternity. He's saying, I've given you specific gifts. I've given you gifts. They're gifts from God directly to you. The first one is eternal life. The second one, wait for it, is the Holy Spirit, is the person of the Holy Spirit. John baptized you in water, but there's going to be a new one that's going to come in. You're going to be baptized. There's one translation that says fire and the Spirit. Why fire? Because fire is going to burn away all the mess. It's going to clean house. It's going to get you straight, and then you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. I love the way the Holy Spirit works when you think about this, this connection. God's giving us gifts, the gift of eternal life, that, that we have hope. Hope that this world is, this old world is not my home. One day the trumpet's going to sound and the sky's going to open up and Jesus is coming back. And when that happens, there'll be this process that we'll, we'll spend eternity worshiping the Lord. But while we're here on earth... While we're in these mortal bodies, he's given you a second gift, and that is the person of the Holy Spirit. And now here's what I want you to understand. Here's really where I wanted to get you this morning. After a couple weeks of talking about the Holy Spirit, understanding who the Holy Spirit is and what the Holy Spirit releases in your life. And it's actually the third gift from God, the third gift from God, and they're spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts that are released by the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Now, I, I'm getting so hyped up right now. You got to feel what I'm trying to get at because you might say, PA, as a person, I'm probably like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a strong two. Like on a scale from one to ten, as a person, I'm a strong two. Like, like I, I suck. I'm, I'm normally not that much fun to be around. I, I'm, I'm, I'm always negative. I, I struggle with peace. I struggle with joy. Thank you, God, for the person of the Holy Spirit that wants to release spiritual gifts in our lives that make us better than who we are. Come on, somebody. These gifts are meant to make us better than who we are. The, the Holy Spirit doesn't make me better than you. The Holy Spirit makes me better than me. Come on, somebody. The Holy Spirit, I want you to write this down, doesn't make me better than you. The Holy Spirit makes me the best version of me. 
He gives us spiritual gifts. Listen to this in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1. Now about spiritual gifts, brothers, I don't want you to be ignorant. This is Paul speaking. He's saying you got to understand. You can't be ignorant when it comes to these spiritual gifts. You have to understand the power that you possess. Somebody drop that in the comments below. I need to understand the power that I possess. I don't know if you guys are microwave people. Come on, we're a microwave generation. Come on, somebody. I love the microwave because I don't, I don't like to wait much for a lot of things. And, and we moved into a new house, got a brand new microwave, and this joker is hot. Come on, somebody. Like, normally in my old microwave, I put something in for 30 seconds, and it's kind of, you know, I can put my finger, I can touch it, okay? It's not too bad, maybe another 30 seconds. This joker, you put it in for 19 seconds, and it comes out with the breath of hell all over it. It's like smoking hot. Come on. I, don't, I didn't understand the power that I was working with in this new piece of product. Come on, somebody. I didn't understand the power level that I was working with in this new piece of product. That's why he's saying you can't be ignorant when it comes to spiritual gifts. You have to understand that the Holy Spirit, your helper, your comforter is with you for a reason. He's given you certain powers. He's given you certain abilities that you need to understand how to use them and why you have them. Listen to this verse. In 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. A spiritual gift is a special supernatural ability that God gives each of his children so that together we can advance his purpose in this world. Come on, somebody. I'm going to read that again. A spiritual gift is a special supernatural ability that God gives to each of his children so that together we can advance his purpose in this world. I just, I wrote down a couple of thoughts that I want to close with today. I want to help you understand spiritual gifts. I really, really do. Because now we're moving from the point of, hey, I'm kind of nervous. I'm kind of leery of the person of the Holy Spirit where, hey, I, I, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm really, really getting it. Now I want, I want to bring you to the fullness, the fullness of who the person of the Holy Spirit is and why it's so important to partner with him, why it's so important to embrace him, why it's so important to love him. Here's, 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 the, first, here's the first way that I wrote down how you can understand spiritual gifts. I wrote down three different ways how you can understand spiritual gifts. Here's the, here's the first thing that I wrote down. The first thing that I wrote down was discover what spiritual gifts you have. Discover the gifts that God has for you. Discover the gifts that God has for you. How do you do that? Listen to this in Romans 12, verse 6. We have different gifts according to the grace given to us. Each person is carrying a different gift. And uh, I'm going to give you a few a few a few signs or a few triggers or a few ways to help you understand because maybe you don't know me, maybe I don't know you, but I want to give you a few ideas how you could start to understand what those gifts are in your life. Sometimes something that you're so adamant about in your system, something that you're so adamant about, maybe it's, maybe it's a political cause, maybe it's a, maybe it's, you know, you know, it's, 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 it's something, you know, something uh, uh, about, uh, uh, you know, child care or it's something about about, you know, just, just caring for your community, caring for your city, but you're so passionate about you. Every time you hear about it, it just, it just gets you up and it gets you fired up and you just want to get involved and get in the mix. A lot of times that's pointing towards a spiritual gift in your life. Whatever you're passionate about, whatever gets you fired up, whatever gets you, gets you like really, really hot, sometimes points to a spiritual gift in your life. One of those things for me is evangelism. I, I get really fired up when I think about just, just steering people closer towards Christ. When I think about steering people just closer or deeper in a relationship with Jesus Christ so they can live the best life possible while they're here on earth. That just gets me fired up and it's one of, it's one of my gifts. It's, it's, it's part of how God made me. It's part of how he created me. And in that gift, we have supernatural abilities. Sometimes you see people communicating or you see people doing things and you're like, how on earth are they doing that? Because they're acting in a spiritual gift that God has given them. Is this making sense? 
I hope this is making sense to you. They're acting in a spiritual gift that God has given them, which seems like a supernatural ability to other people. It might seem like a supernatural ability to other people, but it's not towards you. It's not for you because it's something that God put deep down inside of you. And the more you use it, the stronger you'll get in it. Come on, somebody, the more you use it. Maybe hospitality is a gift of yours. Maybe encouraging people, maybe loving people. Maybe, maybe, maybe you just, you can't help yourself. You find yourself constantly baking people meals and dropping them off at their house. It's pointing towards a spiritual gift in your life. Psalm 139 verses 13 and 16. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Saying, God, put those things deep down into your heart, baby. Come on, somebody. God, put those things deep down into your heart. And now that you're beginning a work walk with the Lord, you're beginning with a journey with the Lord, those things are starting to come to the surface. We want to help you understand those things. Come on, somebody. We want to help you grow in those things. That's why things like team night are so important. If you were just with us on Friday, we had an amazing team night where we just celebrated our servant leaders. We talked about new venues, new avenues, new things that God was going to do in and through us. And I hope that you're excited to step into all that God has for you. You have to discover the gifts that God has for you. Here's the second thing that I wrote down that I'd love for you to write down. Develop the gifts that God has given you. Develop the gifts that God has given you. Well, how do you develop them, PA? I, I, I don't get it. You don't do it by sitting on your butt and doing nothing. Come on, somebody. Did he say it? Yes, he did, because he loves you. You don't develop them by just sitting on your butt and doing nothing. You got to get out there. Come on, somebody. You got to put yourself out there. You got to get involved with the body of Christ. You got you to gotta do something for other people. You got to get involved in ministry. You got to get involved with stuff. I've told my story before. When I got saved, if the lights in the building were on, I was there. This is not a play for you to to, to show up at our building when the lights are on. Please just, you know, show up when you're invited to come. But if the lights were on, I was there because I just wanted to be part of this thing that was going on inside of me. I wanted to develop the gifts that God gave me. And, and I didn't know what those gifts were, so I tried my hand at everything. Come on, somebody. I joined the worship team. They kicked me off the worship team. I was doing the trash. They kicked me off the trash team. Finally, I started doing some personal evangelism. They liked me in that, so they kept me doing that. I was good with it. I served in the kids' department. One kid kicked me in the shin. True story. I never did it again. Come on, somebody. I did not have that gift in my life. But Leslie has, Leslie can have 55 kids jumping on her back, and she's still loving kids. I'm body slamming kids and throwing them all over the place. Come on, somebody. You got to figure out what that gift is, and then you got to begin to develop it. But you only develop it by getting involved. You only develop it, develop it by, by following the word of God and participating in what God has for you. Listen to this verse in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts. Eagerly desire. This is for you in your Christian walk. Are you eagerly design, desiring spiritual gifts? Because this is what the writer is saying here. He's saying, you know what? You should. You should be eagerly desiring spiritual gifts. Eager because it's part of the promise. It's part of the plan for your life. God doesn't dress you up halfway and leaves you. Come on, somebody. God takes you all the way. And he, he's deposited those things deep inside of you. Now it's your job to work those things out. 2 Timothy 1 verse 6, for this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is inside of you. He says, for this reason I want to remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you. You got you to gotta work that work, 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 work. You got to work that thing out. Come on somebody. You got to work that thing out. You got to develop it. You got to you got to use that muscle. It'll begin to get stronger. 
It'll begin to get independent even if you, if you put the work into it. So it, it's like muscle memory. You get into a situation and that thing automatically takes off because you've been developing it. You've been developing it. Here's the th third thing I wrote down. Here's where I want to leave you today. I want you to just make it a point every day to use the gifts that God has given you. Make it a point every day of your life to use the gifts that God has given you. Make it a point every day to use the gifts that God has given you. 1 Peter 4.10, and I'm going to end with this verse. God has given to each of you from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Manage them well so that God's generosity can flow through you. Manage them well so God's generosity can flow through you. I remember when we were beginning our church in the early days and really figuring out God's plan for us and, and what God wanted, to do, God wanted to do through United Church in the city of Richmond. And I remember making this discovery that, that God was calling us to, 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 to exist, to take people on a spiritual journey. That God was calling us to exist, to, to start a movement that would take people through a spiritual journey, that we would come into contact with people that are far from Christ, and we would help them develop their gifts. We would help them build courage. We would help them create deep, deep avenues of faith in their life that would propel them into the fullness of what God would have for them. How are you this morning? What, what, are you, what is your life like this morning? Are you frustrated because every day is the same day? Are you frustrated because you're just nonstop going in a circle? It's, it's the same routine day in and day out. God's called us to help you discover your faith, to help you find freedom, to help you pursue passion. Why? So one day, so one day, you'll say, I was made for this. This is what I was made for. I wasn't made just to go to a nine to five. I wasn't made just to surf the couch and, and watch the internet. I wasn't made, I was made to serve the almighty God, to find people that are far from Christ, to pull them in, to bring them close. Why? So they can find freedom, so they could pursue those spiritual gifts that God put inside of them, all so that, so that we can make a difference. I wanna challenge you. This is the season, now is the time. We're going through this Holy Spirit series for the next couple weeks, and I just encourage you, start figuring out what those gifts are. Start leaning in to the fullness of what God has for you. Desire those gifts. Work those gifts out. Work those things out so you can have a fulfilled life. Don't you want a fulfilled life? I know for me personally, that's what I want for your life, is for you to live life every day to the fullest. To go to bed at night, every night being satisfied, not being disappointed, not being fearful, not being anxious, but being fulfilled by saying, God, I, I did my best for you today. I don't know what you did yesterday. I don't know what you did this morning. But I know in this moment, if you're tuned in, if you're watching, your intention has gotten God's attention. And he wants to do a work in your life. He, he can solve the sin problem in your life. Bring you into the next level of your relationship. Help you develop those spiritual gifts so you can live life to the fullest. So you can really, for the first time ever, be fulfilled. But it's up to you. What happens next in this moment is completely up to you. If you're far from God, or maybe you don't even have a relationship with God, it's time to come close. The Bible says that if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, you can and you will be saved. But it takes you believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth. So right now, i just love to pray for you. If, if, you, if you're not sure what to say, what to do, all you have to do is repeat after me. Say everything that I'm saying. God, I surrender my heart to you. I ask you to be Lord and Savior of my life. I ask you for forgiveness. I believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave for me. I surrender my life to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're, you're on your way. Come on, somebody. We're super, super pumped for you. Don't run out of here. Fill out a connect card. Fill out a prayer card. Let us know that you prayed that prayer. Let us know that you're ready for the next level. You're ready to get plugged in. You're ready to get connected so we can partner with you to fulfill the fullness of all that God has for you. For everyone else watching, I just want to encourage you. Today's your day. Today is your day. 
God wants to do something in and through you. He, and not just for you, not just for your family, but for, for everybody in your sphere of influence, for everybody that you come into contact with. Use your gifts for God's glory. Come on, somebody. Use your gifts for God's glory. Some of us, we're, we're, so, we're so hemmed into our careers, to our jobs. We, we find identity and purpose in those things. God has so much more for you. Your identity and purpose is only through Jesus Christ. Only through Jesus Christ. Let me pray for us. Let me encourage us. And we'll go, go ahead with the rest of the service. Lord, I thank you for each and every person watching. I pray that you would encourage them. I pray that you would build them up from the inside out. I thank you, Lord God, for your gifts, your spiritual gifts that are for our benefit, that are to help us get through each day. And not just get through each day, but win the day. We love you, Lord. We thank you for your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We love you guys. Don't race out of here. Stay tuned. The moment that we see you, we are changed. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. The Holy Spirit is a gift that gives gifts. That's amazing. Thank you so much for that word. And um, I hope that it encourages you to want to go deeper into discovering your gifts, um, go deeper into developing those gifts, and, um, and even knowing what gifts um, God and the Holy Spirit have given to you. So thank you, Pastor Adam, for that. It was great. great. We're going to continue to worship with our giving. Yeah. There's a couple of different ways that you could give. You could give online. Right now, wherever you are, there's probably a connect card or, or a, giving, a giving link that you could go to. If you're on our website, you could just click on the Give Now button and it'll take you right to our online giving portal. Or if you want to mail in a check, you yep. could send that right to our P.O. Box. P.O. Box 13050, Richmond, Virginia, 23225. P.O. Box 13050, yeah. <laughs> Richmond, Virginia, 23225. Yeah. If you're in person, there's other, there's other ways that you could give in person in the buckets um, or online here in the building. But anyway, we're so grateful. Thank we're so you. thankful for your generosity. We're so yeah. thankful for your commitment to give. Giving is a spiritual discipline. That's right. Come on, somebody. That's right. Um, you, you have to develop that. And, you know, it's easy for some people to give. It's not so easy for everybody. So you've just got to say, Lord, Here's what I got. Help step me. Step out and do it. Come yeah, on, somebody. Just do step it. out and Help do it. Help me to do it yeah. and do it with a cheerful Let me pray heart. for us. Yeah. Let me pray for us. Lord, we thank you for uh, today. We thank you for this opportunity to give. Lord God, we bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen and amen. We love you guys. Invite some people next week. Come on, somebody. Invite your friends. We got baptisms coming up. We got a bunch of different things coming up that we need you to be a part of. We love you guys. We're called to love God, unite people, because we're all better united. God bless you guys. See you next week. Thank you.